Today is Sunday, so if you're sitting there, chilling out with your feet up, I've put a top 10 list together for you lot to watch. I'm going to be ranking my Dua fragrances, well 10 of them, 10 being my least favourite, 1 being my favourite. I'm just going to talk to you quickly about them today, I won't take up too much of your time, I'm going to try and fly it through this list. So if you're up for that, people, stay tuned. Just keep your eyes peeled. YouTube. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Right, you see the intro. I've got 10 fragrances in front of me from Dua. They are a clone house or they do inspired by versions of popular fragrances. Niche, designer, indie, they do a little bit of everything. And all the ones that I own, I'm just putting it out there, all the ones that I own are good. Some of them are great. There isn't one that I dislike, but if I'm doing a ranking video, I have to put them in an order. And one being my favorite, 10 being my least favorite, but I still like it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna go through this as quick as I can. I'm not gonna talk too much in depth about the fragrances. I'm just gonna let you know which ones are my favorite and least favorite. So first we got Midnight Rendezvous in a Tux. This is their inspired by a version of Lanwy de Lom and Tuxedo by YSL Ysadaron. So I'm just going to spray it quickly just to remind myself. Some of these I haven't worn in a while. So I'm just going to spray a couple of them. But obviously I know what they smell like. But I'm just going to spray it. Oh man, the cardamom, the patchouli, right. You've got lemon, bergamot, ambergris, ivory, cardamom, tonka beans, rose, cedarwood, black pepper, smoked patchouli, and some other notes. This is citrusy, a little bit spicy. You get that cardamom, that patchouli is popping in this. This literally is the best of both worlds of them fragrances, if you ask me. When you smell it, you get Lumwee de Lom, and you pick up nuances of tuxedo. To me, in this inspired by a version, that Lumwee de Lom comes across a little bit stronger than what the tuxedo does, but I still get whiffs of that tuxedo. All in all, this is a great version. It really is. It's the best of both worlds. And I think you can pick these 30 mils up for 40, 45 pound in the UK. I think some of them might be a little bit more expensive, but you can pick these up for a reasonable good price. And I think they're also extract the perfume. So you do not need a lot of sprays of these because they do last. To me, this is more masculine, definitely. I would rock this personally. I think you can dress it down, but shirt, shirt and tie, I think this would go great with, so I think it's a smart fragrance. So that is number 10, and that is Midnight Rendezvous in a Tux. I want to make sure that I get his names right. Right, on to the next one. Coming in at number 9 is Matrix, and this is their inspired by a version of Zhezhov's Neo. Right, it's been ages since I have smelt that fragrance. So I can't tell you if this is an exact one-to-one -one clone, but what I can tell you is, is that if you like citrus summer fragrances, this is the one to go for. You've got Calabrian Neroli, Sicilian Bergamot, Green Notes, Jasmine, Nutmeg, Guyac, Wood Patchouli, Haitian Vetiver. To me, this opens like a Neroli bomb. It really does. You've it's neroli heavy, then you've got your citruses, you've got little bits of pepper in there, you've got, I think, the nutmeg, you've got the patchouli that comes out on the dry down, but this is a neroli citrus bomb. This is a great 
summer fragrance, like white t-shirt, or if you're doing chores, if you want to smell, it's invigorating, it perks you up. Great fresh out the shower scent, it really, really is. But like I say, I don't know if it's an exact one-to-one -one clone because it's been ages since I tried the original fragrance. But this is a really, really good fragrance. There is no doubt about it. And this lasts for a freshie. This is great. So that is Matrix and that is coming in at number nine. At number eight is Aphrodisiac. Right. This is that inspired by a version of Initio's Psychedelic Love. This is a very, very sexy fragrance, but to me, it just leans a little bit more on the feminine side. It's a little bit floral. Let me spray it. Well, let me tell you the notes. Hedione, Heliotropin, Myrrh, Rose, Ylang Ylang, Bergamot, Sandalwood, Patchouli, it's powdery, it's floral, it is sweet, it's a little bit dense, it almost comes across at times, a little bit vanillic and ambery to my nose. So it's sweet, but it's got them floral touches in there, the rose comes out. It is a sexy, seductive fragrance, and to me, this would go great on a woman. It really would. I just think I would wear it, it's not that I wouldn't wear it. I just think the way the fragrance is constructed, I just think that it leans a little bit more on the feminine side. I know fellas wear this as well, so I'm not saying that. But I'm, to me personally, I think when a woman would rock this, man, sexy, seriously. And this smells great. And it's a beast in performance. Eight to 10 hours, eight to 10 hours with this, and on clothes, man, it's on there for days. It really is. So that is number eight, and that is Aphrodisiac. Number seven. Legendary Night. This is that inspired by a version of Perfumes de Mali, Percival. Right, if you know that fragrance, it's fresh, clean, aromatic. This is exactly the same. This is very, very close. As in, clone-wise, this is very close. It really is. This smells great, especially, this to me, this is an all-year-round fragrance. But if you're wearing this in the summer, it just pops different, it really does. You've got jasmine, violet leaf, geranium, lavender, pink pepper, coriander, musk, bergamot. This is a lively, fragrance it really is citrusy clean it's got musk lurking in the back the lavender comes through to me this is a masculine leaning fragrance there is no doubt about it i mean you can wear what you want when you want but it, it just is just the way it comes across ah oh, it's gorgeous it really is the bergamot in there man the geranium is adding some sort of green touches to it great it really is great but i had to place it somewhere and it's come seventh so that is legendary night and like i say people these are all extract the perfume so they're all potent juices number six is casino royal chariot yeah i've got that right i don't want to mess these names up some of them you've got some long names right this is there inspired by a version of two fragrances. Perfumes de Mali Leighton and Maison Francis Kurt Jean's Baccarat Rouge 540. Right, um, this is gonna be short and sweet, this one. If you like them fragrances, you are going to love this fragrance. Neither one overpowers the other. You get Baccarat Rouge 540 from the get-go. You get Perfumes de Mali Leighton from the get-go. And the way, like you would sometimes, or you wouldn't think that they would go together. But they really do play off of each other very well. This thing is a beast in performance. It really is. I mean, this is like projecting for three hours. And like I say, you get the best of both worlds. 
if you like them two fragrances, try this one out. Casino Royal Chariot. You will love it. I know Leighton is popular and Baccarat Rouge 540 is popular. And like I say, people, if you like that fragrance, I'm going to say it again. Try this. And it smells so similar. Like, you know that they're trying to inspire or copy Leighton. You know that they're trying to clone Baccarat Rouge 540. It's just there. So that's coming in at number six, Casino Royal Chariot. Coming in at number five, this fragrance is a vacation, a holiday in a bottle. It really is. Caribbean Supernova. This is their inspired by version of Roja Perfumes Elysium and Creed's Virgin Island Water. Tropical. This is like a tropical rum drink. It really is. Uh, I've definitely spraying this. This is gorgeous in the summer. It's sweet, it's fruity, man, it's a little bit musky. This whole room is just, I'm gonna end up choking myself out. Right, you got coconut, grapefruit, vetiver, blackcurrant, rum, bergamot, lemon, cedar, musk, ambergris. There's loads more notes in this. Like I say, it's fruity, it's tropical, it's playful. You've got rum in there, so it's a little bit boozy. It literally smells like a tropical rum drink. It really does. It's playful. Like if you're lounging by the pool, or even if you're going out for a few drinks during the day and you're wearing this fragrance, you're, you're going to smell stunning. You really, really are. There is nothing bad about this fragrance. It is so easy on the nose. People, if you haven't tried this, and you like tropical fragrances with a little bit of booze in there, I'm telling you, get your paws on this. Just try it. But that is coming in at number five, and that is Caribbean Supernova. Coming in at number four is a Rose Oud Beast. This is Satin Midnight Atar. This is Atar Extract Juice. This stuff, let me tell you something, is potent. This is the Inspire By version of Oud Satin Mood Extract by Maison France's Kurt John. That is a jammy, rose and oud combo. This smells so, so close to what it's inspired by, Oud Satin Mood Extract. They're I mean, they are so close. I'm not even going to spray this thing. You only need two sprays of this fragrance. If you like rose oud combo fragrances, you're going to love this. You've got Tunisian rose, Turkish rose, vanilla, amber, Loatian oud, benzoin. So it's sweet, it's thick, it's dense. I'm telling you, a couple of sprays... You do not need any more. This thing is on skin till the next day. On clothes, it's, if you don't wash your clothes, say if you just wear a jacket and a bit goes on your jacket and you hang your jacket back up in your wardrobe, I'm telling you, a week later, you're going to be smelling this fragrance. This is potent, potent juice. And it is so close to the OG. Hats off to them. So that is number four, and that is Satin Midnight Atar. Right, we're at the number three spot now. So these three are my favourite out of the doers that I own. Like I say, I like all of them. But these three, yes, th these are my jam. And number three is Exclusive Royal Chariot. This is their interpretation of Perfumes de Mali, Leighton exclusive. If you know that fragrance, you know it's dark, rich, you got some oud in there. This thing, they all their inspired by versions of all these fragrances, they get them so close, they really do. And look at the colour of this juice. Look at the colour of that juice. This stuff 
this is a beast mode as well. It really is. Like, I'm going to spray this because I love the scent profile. But you only need a couple of sprays of this as well. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble, I'm telling you. You will choke out, not just yourself, you will choke out everybody around you. If you want to be smelt when you walk into a gaff, like in a restaurant or anywhere like that, get this. Because this thing just travels. It projects like a nutter. Seriously. You've got almond, geranium, Loatian oud again, civet, mandarin, orange, vanilla, amber, pink pepper. Literally, this is latent on steroids. You've got the latent scent profile. Like I say, with oud, it, it almost comes across a little bit moist and damp. It's rich, dark. I love this. But when I wear this, I only put two sprays on, and that is when I'm going out in the cold weather this is a no-go for summer you don't want to be wearing this you will definitely be in trouble then this is a cold weather beast it projects like crazy i get three hours out of this projection and then after three hours it's still radiating like someone don't even have to get close to you to sort of pick this up and then on close this will last forever as well so forget about it people if you want a beast mode fragrance and you like the scent profile of Leighton just pick this up you will not be disappointed you really won't so that is number three and that is exclusive royal chariot number two is fortune this is the inspired by a version of this bad boy Naxos by Zerzhov and as you can see, I own both. And this is a great copy. It really, really is. You've got that lavender in there. Let me read you some of the notes. Sicilian lemon, bergamot, lavender, honey, cinnamon, sam sambac, jasmine, cashmere and tobacco leaf, tonka bean, vanilla. It pops. It opens almost fresh because you've got the lemon in there. You've got the lavender. The lavender is clean, but then you get this sweetness from that honey. You get the tobacco, the cinnamon, that tonka beans in there, adding more sweetness. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. It really is. I think this leans unisex. I think men and women can rock, rock this equally. That is what I think. Just because the way the whole scent profile comes across... There is nothing too masculine and it definitely doesn't go feminine. So to me, it's in the middle. If you love Naxos and say you can't afford a full bottle because it's expensive and you want that same profile, you will not be disappointed in Doer's version. No way. Like I say, I've got the real thing here and they are so close. They really, really are. But I've had to pull it at number two because number one, I just love the way it smells. So that is number two, that is Fortune. Right, we are down to number one. This is, I just love the way it comes across. This is Ottoman Drowned in Vanilla. This is inspired by two fragrances, Nishane's Annie and Nishane's Hassivat. So you've got both of them fragrances mixed in this bottle. And it just comes across, it's like a creamy, vanillic, pineapple, citrusy bomb. It really is. It's just, I think this is a seductive fragrance. You've got that sort of Aventus DNA, so to speak, if you like. Like, because Hassivat doesn't smell like Creed's Aventus, but they sort of have... A similar scent profile so you've got that in here mixed with that vanilla from Nishane's Annie and let me tell you saying it works wonders it really does it's creamy vanillic sweet it's rich you get some nice pineapple in there. You've got bergamot, pineapple, grapefruit, patchouli, cedar, black carrot, Turkish rose, vanilla, 
and there is loads of loads more notes in this and this is my number one it really is i like everything here i do but when it this one is it is my little gem and i will be getting a backup bottle of this there is no doubt about it so that was ottoman drown in vanilla like i say if you like nishane's annie and you like nishane's hasivat it's a mixture of both of them and the vanilla comes across a little bit more stronger in this but you also get hasivat as well so they bounce off of each other and yet again neither one overtakes the other so you get both of them through the life of the fragrance one don't come in and out you literally get both of the scent profiles together all the way through the wear of the fragrance and that is why i love it and that is my number one right people thank you for sticking with me i have tried to make this video as quick as possible let me know or if you've tried any from the, the brand doer but let me know which one's your favorite and remember people smelling goods always a pleasure and never a chore and i will definitely see you a lot on the next one thank you again